one of the main reasons why I'm actually on this research vessel is to help Chris with his own project because he's taking a lot of samples over a period of 24 hours throughout the whole survey. And since Chris is a human being, although at least I think so, he does need a little bit of help. Hence the reason why we are having these 12 hours, 12 hours shifts. He's doing the day sampling because he's lucky and I'm doing the night shift because I'm uh, less lucky. So for his project, Chris is actually focusing on eDNA. Now, if you've never heard of eDNA, it's one of the coolest thing out there. eDNA stands for environmental DNA, and it basically stands for DNA that is collected from the environment, if that makes sense. Basically, you can imagine that as an organism that occurs in a given environment, either terrestrial or marine, for example, you're going to shed some of your cells, for example, skin cells and hair and other more gross fluids. And all of this is going to end up in the environment. And all of this contains your DNA. What we do is that we take water samples from specific areas. And within these water samples, we have a collection of DNA strands or fragments that all belong to the species that occur in the general area in the vicinity of where we collected that sample. So the idea is that by collecting water samples at very specific location, we can actually identify the species of fish and marine mammals that occur in that area. I don't know if you realize how cool that is. method is relatively new. It's been used in the past quite a lot for bacteria. It hasn't been used that much for larger organisms. It's more kind of in the recent past that people started using this method for identifying larger species such as fish. And it is particularly useful in aquatic environments. And why do you think that is? Well, it's simply because aquatic environments, whether we're talking about lakes or rivers or oceans, are a little bit cryptic as far as where human beings are concerned. We can't really see under the water, or not so well. It's very hard for us to, to tell what's there, and we do have instruments such as eco-sounders that can allow us to see. They really are our eyes underwater. But still, they don't tell us exactly that's the species that you have. So then this requires other kind of sampling, such as trawling or zooplankton sampling using zooplankton nets. There's a, a whole bunch of different methods out there to actually collect the organisms out of their environment to see what they are. And we need to know what they are. We need to know how many there are. We need to know what species there are, because this is simply how we can monitor their harvesting, for example, if they're commercial species, or their conservation, if they're species that are endangered. And you can imagine how it's borderline science fiction to think that you could take water and say, oh, here are the species that we have. I mean, imagine how insane that would be and how useful it would be. First, it would be a lot less invasive than actually collecting the species out of the environment. And second, it could be hypothetically a lot less time consuming and money consuming than the methods that we are currently using. If you'd like to have more information about what Chris is doing, I'm going to put a link to his website in the description below. And I will also put a link to our lab 
in the description below as well, so you can read more about eDNA if you're interested. You may be curious as to how we actually collect the samples for this eDNA analysis, and that's something that I would like to show you as well, so I'll probably be talking about that in another video. And, uh, yeah. I, I don't know if I want to drink this water anymore. Like, did I say feces? Great white shark. Great white shark feces. Uh, unfortunately, DNA is not something you can see. Oh well.